Hey everyone, this is Nancy from New Travel Escapes. Airports often cause people a lot of stress and anxiety. What do you do when you arrive? Where do you go? How do we deal with the crowds? Where do we find our transfers? And so on and so on. Today, we are hoping to alleviate some of your anxiety and walk you through how to navigate the Montego Bay Airport in Jamaica so you can get to your resort with a red stripe in hand with less stress and as quickly as possible. It seems like people are traveling more than ever, and you can see this in action when you arrive at the Montego Bay, also known as Sangster International Airport, and see the crowds arriving and departing. Jamaica is a pretty special island, and it is no wonder that it has become a popular vacation destination over the past 20 years. Sangster International Airport is located in Montego Bay, on the northwest coast of the island, at the center of the country's main tourism region. So the chances are, if you're visiting Jamaica for a vacation, you'll be landing at Sangster International. The airport is within easy driving distance of the cruise ports at Montego Bay, Ocho Rios, and Negro. It is the largest airport on the island by flights and passenger volume. More than 95% of the passengers transiting Sangster are on international flights from North America and Europe. For ease in this video, I'm going to refer to Sangster International as Montego Bay, but you'll often hear people go back and forth between the two names. So you've booked a much needed Jamaican vacation for some well-deserved R&R and you're arriving into the Montego Bay Airport. I'm going to start by outlining all of the info you will need to have on hand. And you may know all of, all of this already, but stick with me because after I explain what you need, I'm going to show you the simplest way to get all of this done before you even leave your house. Our goal is to get you through the airport and to the beach quickly and with as little anxiety as possible. The first thing you'll need is a passport that is valid for at least six months beyond your planned departure date from Jamaica, not your arrival date. Keep that in mind. The second thing you may need, but probably not, is a visa. So this is unlikely to apply to those visiting for a holiday, but you may need a work visa or student visa or some such if you're planning on staying longer than 90 days. Basically, you're going to need a visa. Check with the Jamaican embassy or consulate in your area if you think that you may need one. For most of us, this doesn't apply. The third thing you'll need is your customs declaration form. Now, before you go through customs and immigration, you'll need to fill out a C5 customs declaration form. In the past, these forms have been paper ones that you would fill out on the plane or when you arrive at the airport. There's a better way, and I'll walk you through what this is further into the video. Number four is proof of return or onward travel. You need to have a copy of your return ticket or proof of onward travel if Jamaica is just a stopover. Immigration authorities may ask for this as evidence that you plan to leave the country. And no, no matter how much you may want to, you can't stay indefinitely. Number five, accommodation details. Customs officials may ask for the address and contact information for your accommodation in Jamaica as part of the entry process. So know that information, your resort, your Airbnb, your Verbo, whatever. The sixth thing is a vaccination certificate, and it may or may not be required, and we all know what's happened with the world, so who knows. Depending on your travel history and the current health regulations, you may need to provide a vaccine certificate for certain diseases. I'm going to leave that up to you to know. Number seven is a declaration of cash or monetary instruments. Now, similar to almost every other country, if you're carrying a significant amount like in excess of 10,000 USD or more, you need to declare it to Customs and Border Patrol upon entry. This isn't really new or unusual. And the last thing, Customs Inspection. So know in advance if you're traveling with anything that you need to declare. I'm not going to get into all that in this video. It's easy to look up, but basically no food, no plants, no animal products, etc. So now that you have all of that, let's simplify this. In the same way that Cancun and many other airports have done away from paper tourist immigration forms, Montego Bay Airport has done the same. Before you arrive, you should receive some information from your airline and it will lead you to the link to fill out the C5 forms. C5 forms are the Jamaican tourist immigration forms. I'll show you how we got them from the airline app on my phone. It was easy and streamlined and as you can see, all the links to the forms were right here.
The link they sent us was to enter jamaica.com and we proceeded to fill out the forms. This is what they look like and they let you know when you're done. If your airline does not give you this information, have no fear. You can go to the Montego Bay Airport website and scan their QR code or you can go straight to enterjamaica.com and they will let you fill out the forms easily and then they send you an email confirmation. They link all of this information to your passport and once your passport is scanned at the Montego Bay immigration kiosks, they have the information they need and the process is streamlined. If you don't do it online in advance, you'll be waiting in long lines filling out paper copies, submitting them to customs and waiting for customs to input that info into their system. The footage in this video is taken as we arrived into gate 19 at MBJ and walked from there. After you get off the plane, you will have a fairly long walk as you can see through the airport corridors towards the electronic passport immigration area. So look for signs that point toward passport control. If you filled out your C5 forms in advance, then you can get into a separate line from those who didn't know or have forgotten and they have to do a paper copy, but they're starting to eliminate all paper copies, so have it done online before arrival. Just keep that in mind. FYI, there are washrooms that you get close towards the end of the corridor before passport control, and if you're concerned that someone in your party may need to use the facilities before waiting in line, this is the time. I may have missed it, but I didn't see any potable water refill stations anywhere. So if you're going to need drinking water for yourself or your kids, I would suggest having the flight attendant fill up your water bottle before you leave the plane. Maybe they're there, but I didn't see any. Follow the overhead signs and they will lead you to either a line for those who did their C5 forms in advance or another line for those who did not. Because you watch this video, you know to do those forms in advance so you can be on your way faster and wait in smaller lines. So if you found this helpful, please consider subscribing to our channel. It really does help us out a lot. As you can see, there are automated immigration kiosks and this is what they look like. You put your passport in, it gets your information electronically and they take your picture. The machine will then give you a receipt, so make sure you keep this receipt. This is your immigration receipt. Once you get your receipt from the immigration kiosk, you walk past the duty-free shops and on towards the baggage claim area. Again, the overhead signs are very clearly marked. If you've decided to fly carry-on only and you're in need of sunscreen or some other liquid essentials, you'll be able to pick some up at the duty-free, but be forewarned, it is expensive here. If you're traveling as a family with a lot of luggage, the baggage carts are free to use in the baggage area. Montego Bay Airport has dedicated baggage carousels, which I think they call baggage belts, for each flight and the display screens are clearly marked so it's easy to locate your flight's assigned carousel. After baggage claim, you go into the customs area, so you follow the signs indicating if you do or do not have anything to declare that you're bringing into the country. Once you get through immigration and then customs, then you walk out into the transportation area. I highly recommend that you pre-book your transportation to your hotels in advance. You do not want to rely on trying to arrange transportation when you get there. We are currently working on a video about the five best transfer companies from Montego Bay, so hit the notification bell so you don't miss that one. Whichever transfer company you decide to use, they should tell you in advance which number desk to go to and what color their shirts are. I will put the different transfer company names and desk numbers on the screen if you need them. You can also see if you booked a package vacation with included transfers, this list will also tell you what company your travel provider is using. For example, if you book through Cheap Caribbean or Southwest Vacations, you can see that they use Amstar as their transfer company. But if you do decide to sort out your transportation when you arrive, you can follow the signs towards ground transportation and find a taxi stand. Some advice from me to you is make sure that you use a reputable taxi that is licensed and that you agree on a price before you get into the car. There are two licensed taxi companies operating at Montego Bay Airport and they are Juta and Jcal. We booked our transfers with Seasons Transfers and they told us in advance that they're located at desk 16 and they wear green t-shirts, so they were easy to find. Your transfer company will lead you outside and take you to your driver. 
If you've ever been through the Cancun airport, you should know that Jamaica is slower and more laid back in comparison. We did not find any area in the Montego Bay airport where the timeshare people hassle you like they do in Cancun. If you're waiting for friends to arrive on a different flight, there's a Margaritaville or the Jamaican Bobsled Cafe that are both good options to grab a meal and a drink while you wait. We were staying at Excellence Oyster Bay for this trip, which is located between Falmouth and Florence Hall Village, because we did as much as possible in advance from the time we landed until we arrived at our hotel, it was only about an hour and a half. It was not prime season, but that gives you an idea of how quickly you can get through if you do things online in advance. So let's recap quickly into five simple steps. One, disembark the plane and begin to follow the signs towards the arrivals area. Two, your first stop is immigration. Get out your passport and you can use the electronic immigration kiosks if you use the link I showed you, or you can fill out paper immigration and customs forms. Number three, after you clear immigration, you proceed to the baggage claim area to collect your luggage if you need to. If you flew carry-on, then keep on walking to customs. After collecting your luggage, you may move on to customs and prepare to declare any items required by Jamaican regulations. And number five, lastly, you go into the arrivals hall, find your pre-booked transportation desk. Their representative will lead you out to your driver and your vehicle. And as you exit the airport, take a deep breath, soak in the warm Jamaican air, you are through the airport and on to your chosen destination. Thank you so much for joining us as we try and help you get through the Montego Bay Airport with as little stress as possible. We hope these steps make it easy for you and that you've gotten some valuable tips. Please consider subscribing to our channel. It really helps us out a lot and it is, allows us to keep making videos like this. We hope these detailed steps make your arrival and transition to your resort as smooth as possible. We have an in-depth review coming up about our stay at Excellence Oyster Bay and we will tell you all how it compares to its Mexican counterparts. We never ever tell the resorts we make videos about our experiences and we always strive to bring you an authentic review so you get a good idea of what to expect and if it's something you want to spend your hard-earned vacation dollars on. Until next time, safe travels and may your time in Jamaica be filled with unforgettable memories and everything is iry.